Circuit breaking and circuit breakers are an important pattern that can help with service resiliency. The cir circuit breaker pattern is used to prevent additional failures by controlling and managing access to the failing services. The easiest way to explain this is with a very simple example. Let's say our greeter service starts failing, and instead of calling in continuously, we could detect the failures and either stop or reduce the number of calls being made to the service. If we added a database to the example, you could quickly imagine how calling the service could put more stress on different parts of the system and potentially make everything even worse. This is where a circuit breaker comes into play. Uh, with Circuit Breaker, you can define the conditions when you want the Circuit Breaker to trip. For example, if we get more than 10 failures within a 5 second time period, once the Circuit Breaker trips, uh, you won't be making calls to the underlying service anymore. Instead, we will just directly return the error from within the Circuit Breaker. This way, you are preventing additional strain and damage to the system. In Istio, Circuit Breakers get defined in the Destination Rule. Circuit Breaker tracks the status of each host, and if any of those hosts start to fail, it will eject them from the pool. Practically speaking, if we have five instances of our pod running, the Circuit Breaker will eject any of the instances that misbehave so that the calls won't be made to those hosts anymore. The outlier detection can be configured by setting the number of consecutive errors, scan interval, and base ejection time. In addition to the outliers, you can also set the connection pool properties, such as the number of connections and requests per connection being made to the service. Let's look at an example. The circuit breaker settings are not defined in virtual service, they are being defined in the destination rule. So I'm gonna paste in the settings for a circuit breaker and then we'll go through each of these fields and explain what these values mean. Let's look at the individual settings. Let's start with the connection pool settings first. The first setting here is called HTTP1 max pending requests. And this is a maximum number of pending requests to the service, meaning if there are more than, in our case, one request that's queued for the connection, the circuit breaker will trip. The max requests per connection is a maximum number of requests per connection to the service. Same thing, the circuit breaker will trip if there's more than one connection. Under the outlier uh, detection, there's a couple of different fields there. Uh, the Envoy proxy uses outlier detection to detect when pods are not reliable and it can eject them from the load balancing pool for a period of time. This is the base ejection time uh, setting. The second setting in play here with the ejection is the max ejection percent. And this is a threshold that if reached will cause the circuit breaker to load balance across all the hosts again. Now, let's say, for example, our max ejection percent is set to 50%. The circuit breaker will keep ejecting the hosts from the load balancing pool if they're failing. That means that only healthy hosts will receive traffic because the ones that are failing are ejected. Now, once that 50% of hosts start to fail, the circuit breaker reverts back and starts load balancing across all the hosts again, including the failing ones as well as the healthy ones. This is a setting that's used in case of a severe outage, so you can start dropping some requests instead of exhausting the few healthy hosts that are still available. The decision to eject a host or not is controlled by the consecutive error setting. In our case, if there's more than one error, error is considered an HTTP 500 response, the host will get ejected. Finally, the interval time is just an interval between checking if the new hosts need to be ejected or brought back into the load balancing pool. Well, let's go ahead and deploy this destination rule. So I'm gonna do kubectl apply minus f destination rule. And as soon as this gets created, uh, let's just quickly double check uh, all the pods that I have running. So I only have uh, greeter service v1 running. If we have v2 or v3, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you're not uh, routing traffic to any other versions. 
So with this deployed, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do uh, in order to demonstrate Circuit Breaker, I will use a load testing library called Fordio. Using this library, you can easily control the number of connections, uh, concurrency, and delays of the outgoing HTTP calls. To deploy Fordio, um, if you download the included files, there's gonna be a Fordio.yaml file. So just run kubectl apply minus Fordio to deploy it. It's Fordio.yaml. Now we will use the Fordio pod to actually make calls from within that pod to the greeter service. In order to do that, we will need the name of the Fordio pod. So I'm just gonna copy the Fordio deploy pod name here. And then I'm gonna run kubectl exec minus it, and I'm gonna paste in the name of the pod. And uh, I'll say C4DO because I want to exec inside of the Fordio container. Remember that this is deployed in the default namespace. So there's also an Envoy proxy that lives next to uh, this Fordio pod. So minus C4DO, and then I'm gonna run the Fordio binary with the following parameters, HTTP greeter service 3000 slash hello. So this made a uh, single request to the greeter service and it all works. We got the response back uh, and everything is fine. Now, in order to make the circuit breaker uh, trip faster, let's decrease the number of uh, concurrent requests and just the number of uh, requests in general. To do that, I will use the same command but over here, I'll say that I want to do two concurrent requests and queries per second, I'll set to zero because we want the maximum amount of queries per second. And then I'm just gonna do, let's do 20, uh, 20 requests and I'll set the log level to be warning. So I'm gonna run the same thing. Now notice this time down here, we made 20 calls in total 17 of those calls succeeded. We got the code uh, 200 back, HTTP 200. However, in uh, three cases or 15%, we got the code 503 back. And this is the circuit breaker in action. Since metrics are collected for every uh, request that goes between uh, the services within a service mesh, we could use Prometheus to look at some of the metrics and see if we can find uh, find these requests that are failing or the requests where the circuit breakers were tripped. So let's do stoctl dash Prometheus to open the Prometheus dashboard. Now from the Prometheus dashboard, what we can do is we can list all the STO requests first. So let's do STO requests total and let's do execute. And as you can see, there's a couple of metrics and um, it's very hard to read what it is. So let's just, filter it down by destination app. So this is the destination service, which in our case was the greeter service. So let's do it this way. Uh, looks better, but still not good. So let's do a uh, let's do a sum here. And what we're gonna do is let's just get back the response code and let's get back the response flags. And we can also do source app just to make sure that it's coming from Fordio. All right, so there you go. So the first thing here is all the 200, uh, 200 response codes, so all the successful requests. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Uh, there were no response flags set for this one and the source app was Fordio, this is what we wanted. And notice the second one here, this is a 503 and the response flags in this case are set to uh, UO. And UO stands for upstream overflow and if you would go to the Envoy's documentation and look at the response flag uh, values, you would see that this is actual circuit breaking in action. 